Ridley and I really only had two very short conversations about this movie. The first conversation Ridley and I had was, you know, how would we do this? What, what would the musical genre be? And I just kept thinking we should make it two tribes. There's basically the very polished, very precise, very technologically advanced American tribe, and that's one type of music, and, you know, the techno tribe. And the other side is the North African side, you know, and that, that would be, you know, more ethnic instruments, etc. But they would have equal power, equal strength, equal expression. Even before shooting started, you know, I, I read more books about the history of Somalia and, and the, the history of that than, than any musician should. This is what happened on this film. I was going to have three months, you know, the whole film, the whole schedule moved up. So I can either sit there and be terrified of it and write very carefully and just rely on every bit of knowledge I have and take all that craft and apply it and come up with a score which will absolutely work or throw all that out and just go, you know, stare at, you know, stare the fear in the eyes and just go for it. I wanted to work virtually in the way that the Rangers and the Deltas worked in the uh, work in the movie. I mean, stay true to their thing, which is work within a very small group of very, very sophisticated, very highly trained musicians, all with very strong opinions of their own. And that's pretty much why, you know, we built the war room and the way we've been going about this there's some tunes I wrote, uh, and then we go in and we just, you know, fight it out amongst ourselves and be dangerous and, and, and be exposed about it and, and have things go wrong and have accidents and be right at the edge of everything. <laughs> That's fabulous. In a funny way, I mean, because the impression I got from watching the film the first time was there is a, there's a vulnerability within this group of soldiers that, that, that they only overcome by taking chances for each other, you know, and, and in a way, I, I'm trying to have that reflect in, in our process. One at a time. Confusing that double C. Isn't, isn't that two Cs there? Yeah. You know, it gets pretty heated in there as well. I mean, I've, I'm purpose surrounded myself with very individual thinkers and very strong personalities. We were, we were waiting for your part to get transparent. No, no, it's not that. It's just because if we're going to get into it, let's get into it. <laughs> yeah, where are you going? Let's do it. I got it four times, and then we should just let it run, right? Okay. No, I tell you what, four times is a long time. Well, let's, let's go for it. Okay. One of the things I think which hopefully will differentiate this from anything else anybody has done, I mean, there are a lot of things which we just leave to chance things we've been doing is literally just playing up against the picture, you know, uh, for 20 minutes and then taking sections of that and just moving them around, you know, virtually like Jackson Pollock would do with a paintbrush, just doing these huge big brush strokes and not having many things move within it. A lot of it is just, you know, moments are just sort of grabbed. I mean, there's one tune which right now only exists on a handheld video camera. Because we were all playing and okay, get in some way just somehow get it down because it's a good tune, you know, and the feel is really good. So, you know, all it exists on is a terrible microphone from a video camera. But it's, it, you know, it's, it's definitely within the spirit, I think, of this movie. It's not just improvisational, you know, I do have a plan, I do have a tune, we try it out and we instantly know the plan is going wrong and we adapt, you know, we, we come up with new ideas, da, da, da. that's how we work, you know, we, we go and sit there, watch through the reel, discuss it, discuss the work we have done 
we've probably done better things since. We take the bad things out, put the new things in, you know. Uh, the other thing which is unusual, usually you just score scene by scene by scene by scene, you know. We're literally scoring the whole movie in one go, you know, whereby, you know, something over here will land up over, you know, in a completely different reel, in a completely different scene. So, so I'm trying to keep that arc intact all the time. I try to do the same thing with the orchestra. I try to make them into a unit that isn't just a bunch of musicians leading notes. And so with my friend Bruce Fowler, who used to play in Frank Zappa's band, and Frank was very good at just getting his musicians to do very precise but very dangerous things. So he taught the musicians these gestures, like this means play your highest note, this means play your lowest note, this means, you know, slide you know, you know, with different gradations. So we would do things literally with the orchestra where they would never know what was going to hit them next, but they had to watch. They had to watch us, you know, stay eye contact. <laughs> some of these things, but they're virtually like soft sound sculptures. Because one of the things you can't do if you're trying to stay unpredictable in this movie is, oh, it's just the North African instruments or it's just the American instruments. You know, because that becomes, the unpredictability of that becomes predictable in its own way. So, you know, occasionally I just want to pull back and have the orchestral colors in. So it, it is more like a sculpture. It's more like a collage, this whole thing. <laughs> it's such a fragile beast, this film. It's driving me crazy, you know. Um, because, I mean, just, just the opening, you know, just the opening scene as the first helicopter's moving across Somalia and you see the, the food distribution. God, look, look, they're shooting uh, women and children, you know, I mean, the uh, our deep soldiers. Uh, you know, the, this, this is terrible, and, and you want to comment on it in your Western way, you know, in our, you know, you know European or American moral standards. And, and in a funny way, what I'm trying to do is not do that for a while, and just, just let us observe, and let the music just observe. <laughs> If I start commenting on it too soon, nobody's going to start thinking in the audience. And it's not, it's not like we're trying to teach anybody a big lesson, etc. but leave room, leave room. Acknowledge that an audience is an intelligent body of humans that, that 
are allowed to make up their own mind about things. I'll say what I think. Please. Here we go. Ready? Yeah. Um, I think the the opening on a big screen is so big, right? Of the crowds and the that it's kind of, uh, if you like, uh, uh, kind of uh, epic scale, right? Because the landscape and mm -hmm. the, the, the and I think I love the playing of the. This, the string instrument, mm -hmm. but is that going to be the foremost instrument or is it going to be the subtext? I don't know. Because well, no, it's the foremost instrument, but it's because, small. I mean, mm -hmm. all, the, the playing of it is beautiful, but I find that what it does, it holds back the scale of the scene. Right. Is that fair? Absolutely. Can you what he does great is he'll remind me of things. You know, he'll remind me of little bits of conversation we had, you know, so I can find my way again. Because right now, I'm just. You know, I'm flailing about like crazy, on, sort of on purpose, mm -hmm. trying to leave all reason behind. And what you need is the reasonable man to occasionally come in and say, you know, you're a bit off base here, you know, whatever. Um, and, and, and so I'm using him. I'm using him very much as, you know, the, as the guy who steers, steers the boat. And at the same time, you know, he, let, he lets me steer the boat until I sh shout for help. I mean, I'm, you know, God, I mean, I'm thinking of the record company that is going to release this. I'm hoping I'm not making a complete mess of it as well, because it's probably the most sort of out there, you know, dangerous soundtrack I've ever done. For Ridley and Jerry Bruckheimer to let me work this way, um, I don't think Jerry is crazy. He's been too successful. And Ridley's definitely not crazy. But they, they you know, they, they, they're just, I, I, I bet you they are just praying that I'm pulling it off. Because I have pushed them out onto a ledge as well, not just myself. The main tune I actually, I mean the main theme I wrote for this film is one of the things I was trying to do is I was trying to make it so it was nearly ancient. It could be a Renaissance theme. It could be, you know, it is that soldier, that, that, that boy that went to war, you know, every few years, every generation. You know, it could be from the 30-year war, something like that. So, so just, you know, there, there, there seems to be a line of these men that do this job. You know, I was trying to give them the, that ancientness, the timelessness and the simplicity of it as well. This is a job they go and do. I don't think the 
they think of themselves as heroes. I don't think that this is a word that they would ever use to describe themselves. And so I'm trying to not do that, not use that word. I'm just trying to let you observe. I think Ridley has taken great care to be true to the story and to be realistic. And I desperately am trying to not be manipulative in that sort of filmic way and to, to try to, you know, be, be real, you know, and let you feel what this is like. The only way I, I know how to write this is by becoming, you know, the movie with all its brutality and all its thing. And, I, you know, I mean, I, I leave here at six in the morning, I go to sleep, I dream about it, and those, these are not present dreams. You know, give me a sex comedy any day to do, I mean, I'd have more fun. So part of it is it's, 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 it's pretty tough on the old psyche. Um, you know, there's a, there's a personal commitment you have to make. Yeah. And, and just the idea of not going over old ground that I've done before. It's just a personal challenge, you know, you want to make it as good as possible. You know, they're sitting over there in the dub while we are chatting, you know. Um, trying to get things done and I'm way behind and there's only one reason I'm way behind because I'm ambitious to make it good you know I'm I, I, I think I owe it to Ridley I mean I owe it to Ridley in a, in a funny way to 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 the real guys you know I mean if, if, if I can get that close to being to doing something that doesn't embarrass them I think I'm doing pretty good <laughs>